Hey everyone, Dukin is here with a video covering the basics of shotgunning. It's no secret that shotguns are dominating the crucible right now, especially with the sniper nerf. I've been using shotguns for a while now, certainly before the nerf, and I've picked up a few tricks. I'm hoping to transfer my experience to you guys over the course of a few videos, starting with the beginner version, which is this one. The idea is, if everyone's using a shotgun anyway, I can give you guys an edge to hopefully use yours better than the enemy uses theirs. The footage in this video will mostly be trial since that's what I play 95% of the time, but the lessons covered are absolutely applicable to all playlists and I'll make those connections throughout the video. We're going to discuss two basic ways you can become a decent shotgunner, knowing how to get close to your enemy and knowing when to commit after getting close. After writing the commentary for this video, I realized it looks like I'm promoting the use of special weapons only and never using your primary. The reason it looks like that is because this is a video about using a shotgun effectively. It ignores other factors such as pushing as a team and using primary weapons. So I want to emphasize before we get started that your primary is called a primary because you should primarily have it out. It should be the weapon you have equipped the majority of the time and your shotgun should only be pulled out when the situation calls for it. Alright? Let's get into it. As mentioned, there's two points I want to cover today. The first one being how to get close to your enemies. In trials, you generally want to hold down the capture point or at least get to the middle of the map safely. For my examples, I'm going to choose maps that tend to favor snipers. The reason being, staying out of sight lines on maps like Asylum are easy because there's very few sniper lanes and a lot of cover. So if you practice and learn how to keep yourself invulnerable on open maps, you'll find it easy on close quartered maps. So first example, on Pantheon, most snipers aim down the waterfall hallway or the main challenge across the cube. If you're shotgunning, you should never be running down waterfall hallway because there's almost no cover. As for the opening beside the cube, you can hug the wall inside to stay covered. This allows you to get to the middle of the map with no vulnerability. You can then use pillars and blocks as cover to push the enemy team, or you can sit back and just hold the point down. Let's look at an open map, Widow's Court. If I have top spawn, I'll push to the apartment building, slide behind this wall, and then move into the church. Alternatively, you can go right off spawn, hug the left wall, and then use the stones to keep pushing. If you spawn on the opposite side, you can move beside the castle, and then use the stones for cover. Moving to the right off spawn, you can go through the church and behind the wall towards apartments. How far you go is determined by your team's game plan. I don't always push up as far as I showed in these clips, I just wanted to show you the entire distance in case that fits your game plan. I know my examples don't leave you 100% covered 100% of the time. Getting perfect cover is rare, especially if you want to get to places quickly. Sometimes you have to leave yourself open for a fraction of a second like I have on this line here, which usually isn't a problem unless you're playing an insanely good player. I'm not going to cover every map due to time constraints, but you guys know the popular sight lines on each map, so it's just a matter of staying away from them, or at least exposing yourself as little as possible. You can apply the same logic in other playlists as well. So let's use control as an example. Say you're spawning on A flag on Shores of Time and you want to push B flag. You're not going to go through the hallway in the middle of the map because you know a guy is going to be sitting on the jungle dish hard scoping that opening. You're also not going to push up past the special ammo while in the open because you'll be a sitting duck. The route I would take is behind the rocks, using as much cover as I can get, and approaching the left of the flag to reduce vulnerability as much as possible. Let's talk about options once you're in position. And in position just means you safely got where you wanted to go without dying. When you're there in trials, there's two things you can do. The first option is to wait. If you're holding down the point, you're waiting for the opponent to make a move at you while obviously adjusting your position so they can't get angles on you. Another thing you might be waiting for is a teammate to get a pick if you're playing with a reliable sniper. Going for a pick with a shotgun can result in you going down in enemy territory because you had to get so close to get the kill, which gives your opponents easy orb control and drastically hurts your team's chances to win the round. So if you have control of the point and you're comfortable where you set up shop, staying put isn't a bad play. In other playlists, Maybe you're waiting for a team to show up so you can push the flag, or maybe you have the spark and rift and you need backup. Regardless of what playlist you're in, if you got this far, you did a good job staying out of enemy sight lines and you're ready for the next step. The next step could be waiting, or the next step could be the other option, which I call committing. If you want to get the first blood in trials, or you're ready to attack an enemy to push for a flag, you have to be smart and tactical about your approach. That starts with understanding your weapon. A shotgun is a one-hit kill when used best, right? We all know that. So in a perfect play, your opponent can only see you for the split second that you pull the trigger. Your opponent's view of your body should be obstructed at all times before and after you take the shot, 
ideally. It never happens that perfectly, but that's what you're aiming for to achieve minimum vulnerability. I'll show you an example so you guys know what I mean. Take a look at this clip. I decide I want to go for a pick. After leaving the warehouse, I see that my opponent is looking right at me. I can't kill them from this range. Looking back, I probably could have closed the gap, but in the moment, I backed away to try a different approach, putting cover between us, then jumping to switch the angle. Once he's dead, I see another enemy on my radar and move towards him. Instinctively, I want to run left and attack him straight on, but a better play is to keep the car between us, jump over it, and then hit him from point blank range. Approaching from an unsuspecting angle, as well as not giving any opportunity to damage me, virtually guarantees this kill. The last kill is a lot easier. His team is dead and he's panicking. But notice how I approach him from above instead of chasing him around the corner. Shotgun range is low. You need to be close to land a one hit kill, so every inch counts. This is a textbook round, which is why I chose it for the video, but I'll show you an example of where I make a mistake. We're on rusted lands in a pretty open area. I did a good job keeping the water tank between me and my opponent, however, I try and close way too large of a gap and I'm easily killed. A better approach would have been to use my primary. Remember that your shotgun is a situational weapon. By practicing, learning, and understanding just how far people are from you based on your radar, you'll avoid the mistake I just made. Learning what gap you can and can't close will help you decide when to commit, and that's actually going to be a major portion of the next video. Let's do a quick summary of what we covered today. The Crucible meta heavily favors shotguns, so learning that craft is more important than ever before. Step 1 to getting a shotgun kill is safely traveling towards your enemy. This is accomplished by staying out of popular sight lines to get in position, which means different things to different players in different playlists. Once in position, use map knowledge and radar judgment to decide when to push. If the gap is small enough, use your shotgun. If the gap is too big, use your primary. So that just about wraps up my beginner tutorial on shotgunning. If you learned something from this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Feel free to ask me any questions about shotgunning you have in the comments below, and I'll get back to everybody as usual. Some questions might even spark an idea for a future video. Speaking of future videos, the next tutorial will be more technical and dive deeper into committing, so definitely keep an eye out for that. But until then, duking us out.